morning. It's a splendid Friday morning. A little bit cold and witty out there, but it's a fine one to talk sports on super screen television right here on Star Time 173 and on Terrestrial UHF 45. Yes, so many events are taking place this weekend. Exciting games in Europe, not to forget the average. But this morning, we'll be taking a preview as to what is happening to the basketball team that has gone to China. We'll also look at what our teams will be doing on the continent. I'm talking about Enyimba and Niger Toledo's. And the sad one just reeled in um, just a couple of 48 hours ago that if I change in there, a Super Falcon superstar passed on at the age of 36. We'll look at that and her contribution. And we'll go to Europe where Wolves are showing that they have the tenacity to hold sway on the European scene, having won their first leg in the Europa Cup qualifying series. We'll also look at the league as it affects the EPL. Big games right there, talking about um, Arsenal, Liverpool going to Anfield. Will they spring up a surprise? And other big games also, Tottenham is on the pro, Chelsea, Manchester United. And we'll look at the Bundesliga. Yes, the Bundesliga live studio will open tomorrow right here on Super Screen Television. And the Football Center will be on to yourself live. We'll be bringing to you one of the games as it's happening right there in the Bundesliga. Wonderful morning, I will say again. My name is Prince William Yusa. The comedy view with me right in the studio is Tayo. Oh, no, Tayo, good morning. Good morning, Tayo. Good morning. Yes, I can see you're fully prepared for the weekend. It's a sporting weekend, a lot of activities to go. Lest I forget, we didn't talk about tennis. The U.S. Open, the rankings are out. The pairings are also out as well. And Maria Sharapova. What a rivalry! And and we have a lot of rivalry between them. And this this is not um, yeah, an exhibition match. It's a real match. The flushing medal. And um, I was surprised when I saw the the uh, the pairing. So they will be meeting themselves in the first leg. Yeah. But I'm hoping uh, in the first round rather. I'm hoping that Serena will be able to. Your spring is surprising. We'll talk about that because these two ladies, beautiful, stocky, and um, the opens will definitely come to the fore. But we'll look at that as we go in the course of this program. Let's start from the home front and quickly tell you that either we like it or not, the basketball team, the Tigers, are right there in China. And they had their first friendly against an Iranian team. Uh, they did lose 81 75. A lot of people are attributing it to probably fatigue from. Uh, the long flight of two to China, but that as it may be, we all know that um, the Tigers are raring to go. They'll be having their second game either today or tomorrow, and a lot of people are asking questions which way forward with the Tigers. But I can assure you that this is a team that is willing to go as it will be. Well, like I rightly said earlier on, we'll talk about tennis, but still, my producers still want us to pick up from that particular place the rivalry between. Serena Williams and Maria Sharapova. Uh, it's an open. My producer is just telling me it's going to be a very big open. Tayo, let's start from the tennis angle since they're insisting we should go in there. Um, they've met 24 times, and I think uh, Sharapova had only had two victories against Serena Williams. Yes, uh, is uh, Sharapova, um, um, Serena Williams, uh, over the years, have had a, uh, a better head to head advantage over Sharapova, but we never can tell because this particular lady is also a fantastic tennis player. Mm. But I'm hoping Serena will do everything possible. Probably, and, and judging from the fact that she'll be playing, uh, playing on the home soil, she is US. Yeah. So I don't think um, uh, Sharapova, Sharapova will be able to pose a threat that Osaka did. Well, well for, 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 for Serena Williams, she's going at her 24 Grand Slam titles. She almost got it the other time right there in the French Open, but she was knocked out. Do you really see her moving all the way forward, considering the fact that age is not on her side? Yes, uh, probably she will still have opportunity of picking one or two Grand Slams. More Grand Slams. Mm. But I think uh, she has been given everything. Even despite the fact that she's aging, she has been given everything. She, she actually she's looking at breaking that Margaret scores her record. And I'm hoping this year she might just wrap it up. All right, straight to my producer, Fumi. Don't worry, you'll see more opens as early as them hit the lawn right there in the flushing medal. Let's come back home and um, start from the home front. Like I was saying earlier on, the basketball team are right now in China. Tayo, um, despite all the ups and downs, all the frills, they're in China. They had their first 
friendly game yesterday against Iran. Though they did lose 81 75, but is this a sign of things we're going to see? Yes, it's, well, for me, he, we might see that as a disappointing result, but it's a good test for them. And um, losing this particular game is going to spur them into preparing very well. And judging from the fact that the, uh, the controversy surrounding them leaving very late. But I see hope from this, uh, this loss, they will be able to learn one or two things from it. But I'm giving it up to them for right. them to replicate the feats of the ladies as well. Uh, 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 let's, let's, let's look at the teams that we're playing. They'll be meeting Russia. And they have a friendly game against Poland just to size up the strength and speed of the Russians. Um, from your own take, do we have a chance getting to the quarterfinals in that group? Well, uh, it's, too, it's too close to call and it's, it's still very, uh, very early. And uh, if you look at uh, the main basketball team, you discover that at the worst stage, you have a lot of uh, top, top, top nations top nation doing fantastic. Apart from USA, we have Lithuania, uh, we have uh, Spain, you have Argentina, we have Argentina, we have Russia, we have, Russia, we we have, have Germany. Greece. So, but I am hoping our boys will be able to <laughs> maybe because it's not like football yeah. where you use strength, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you I'm just, it requires a lot of skills and uh, speed, yes. Uh, but from the fact that many of them they, they gather a lot of experience in the NBA, they should be able to do that, mm. to inject some of those experience and just go all the way. All right, just go all the way. We're wishing the Tigers the very best as they move into the World Cup right here in China. They'll be having another friendly game against Poland either today or tomorrow. When we come in on Monday, we'll give you the nits and wit of how they've gone. Still within the home front, let's talk some continental football. Eimba will be playing uh, their games behind closed doors, just as Ninja Tornadoes will also be going out. Um, I am of this opinion that Niger Tornadoes is at a disadvantage, considering the fact that they considered so much goals in the first leg. Yes. Uh, well, if, if you look at it, it's very, very dicey when you look at that particular encounter. And um, going away to lose, and they will be playing at home now. Yeah. So I think they should, with the couple with uh, the support from the fans, but like you said, they considered a lot of goal in the first leg. So I, I hope they will be able to redeem their image. Mm. But for Eimba, uh, although we might say uh, that Raimo, they, are, they don't have a lot of pedigree comparing them to Eimba. But for them to have beaten us uh, in the first leg, they might want to post uh, another threat. And we, we should not forget that we are going away to, yeah. uh, to, to actually play. But I'm giving it to Eimba. They've won it twice, back to back. No, Eimba is playing at home. That's why they haven't... Um the decision to play behind closed doors. All right, and uh, if you look at the game, I feel they should be able, although if you look at Eimba, they've won it a long time ago. Yes. But they should, those guys should be able to uh, fall back on that, uh, that particular record. Because Tyler, what do you think should be of the making? Suddenly, calf thinks we're not serious, we're not prepared. With the recent comment that um, no security, no floodlights, um, posters around the stadium and we're proposing hosting under 20. What, what, what kind of picture are we painting? Well, for me, uh, the, the truth is CAF has, for me, they've not done anything wrong by banning, uh, suspending Eimba, playing behind closed door. And uh, it boils down to the fact that we are never prepared. And even when we are prepared, it's a fire brigade approach. <laughs> we don't and uh, it cut across all our sport, not no. only football. Okay. And, and the problem is this uh, must win mentality from our technical uh, crew, the, uh, the sport administrator. Despite the fact that they are not coming out to actually support the athletes, they want them to win at all costs. But I just hope Eimba will just, they, they will do us proud this time around. All right. We're wishing Eimba and Niger Tornadoes the very best as they go out there within the African competition to do Nigerian proud. We need to talk about something though, pretty sad, but that's life. You leave some, some must go. Just 48 hours ago, we had that if I am changing it, not I'm changing it, because news has been flying around that I'm changing it. I'm changing it is the goalkeeper for the Super Falcon. She's still around, healthy, strong, and doing pretty well. This is a player called if I am changing it, who played for the Super Falcons far back 1999. And if anybody has been following Nigerian football in the last 
Nigerian female football in the last 10 years, you must know a fine trade man. Uh, a sad news, you must say. Uh, um, she passed on at the age of 36. But if you look at her pedigree and what she has contributed to female football, um, she's a star. Well, it was a sad one. And uh, when I heard it yesterday, I was actually, I was, um, I was dumbfounded. And then uh, one cannot forget what she has brought to female football, most especially going to the, uh, to the World Cup in Canada in 2002. Uh, she has done a lot. And like you said, you have to just, you win some, you lose some. Yeah. And um, it's quite unfortunate that we have lost her because we need people like this around to, uh, to give all the needed supports, they do to share some of their experiences they've had, they've gathered over the years over for the, the younger years. ones. But it's a sad one. We just hope that the family, we uh, God will grant them for to be at the loss. We just hope that God will grant them the fortune to be at the loss. As we're talking about the fine changes, some other player, a very fantastic player, passed on right there in Ghana. Can you give us full details, Tayo? Well, uh, Junior Agogo. It was this morning that I had the comments that he, he passed on late last night. And um, the report says that he has actually been suffering from a stroke since 2015. And he eventually passed on. And it was a sad one for football because this guy, I could remember 2007 against Nigeria. He scored one of the goals <laughs> against Nigeria in the semi final. But it's a fantastic one. Uh, it's a sad one, rather. For, for Ghana because these guys are supposed to still uh, be probably in their technical, their, their technical crew because we could see Sise what he did for Ghana uh, for the uh, for the Senegalese but it was a sad one for football it's a sad one I must say we just hope that the family will have the large heart to bear this great loss let's move away from the African continent let's move away from death and life and go straight to some more actions this time we're talking about the European qualifying series where Wolves are showing that they have a class of their own uh, for me I have taken a sudden interest in Wolves in the last two years um, having come into the EPL and what they've been able to do defeating the big names the big guns in the EPL and holding sway out of nothing they're, from a lean budget Wolves are showing that they have a formidable team suddenly they're in Europe showing class yes uh it was a fantastic one for them winning away from home 3-2 against torino and then uh, if you look at torino torino is although they might not be at that top flight anymore, anymore there was a time but, torino was just uh, there. there was a time that they uh they are one of the big guns when it comes to italian football it was a fantastic one for for wolves and uh, winning this they are able to score three goals away probably just a goal or two at home and then um, like you said like last season it was i think it was only arsenal it was only liverpool that was able to actually uh, beat them they drew against manchester city they beat chelsea they drew against arsenal and they they, they eventually beat arsenal yeah in the second and they equally beat uh manchester United. and last week just last week they drew against manchester United. i i hope they will be able to go all the way because mm. if you look at europa there are some teams that uh, it's like they are made for Europa. Yeah. They understood the terrain. Yeah. But it's a fantastic one for English, uh, uh, for, Eng uh, for an English club to have gone to Europe. I agree absolutely with Tyler. That is a fantastic one with an English club, especially Wolves. They are raring to go. And they will be on parade, on full parade this weekend. And those of you who want to see the makeup of Wolves can watch the EPL. Uh, let's talk some league actions in Europe right now. We're starting from Spain, where the La Liga is in the second fold, and Barcelona is the focus. Messi is injured, Dembele is injured, Suarez is also injured. The onions right now lies on Antonio Griezmann, one Frenchman. I'll tell you, they'll be meeting Real Betis. Um, I'm not too comfortable with the Barcelona team as it is right now. Do you see any surprise? Like I said last week, and I said there might be a surprise with Atletico Barbo. It did happen. Well, for me, um, <laughs> over the years, discovered that just like in England, we have top four. But in, in, uh, Spain. in Spain, it's usually top two. <laughs> but last season, they posted uh, a threat against uh, Barcelona. They mm. won one of the legs. And then uh, looking at the situation of the team right now, uh, they are. Messi is not around. Dembele is not around. Suarez is not around. So yeah. the bulk of the pressure will be on the shoulder of uh, Griezmann. I Griezmann. So I don't see... Uh, what they can actually do against the uh, the Real Betis because these guys, although they 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 are not among the top flights, mm. 
But when it comes to big games, they gave everything. It's just like Liverpool mm -hmm. playing against <laughs> the top four. So, but I'm hoping Barcelona will be able to uh, live up to their name mm -hmm. tomorrow. Okay. But I'm giving it to uh, Real Betis. All right. Um, do you see another game between the Spanish La Liga that catches your fancy? I, I, I read a comment where Casola said Chico is a, is a fantastic player within the Valeria film. Um, do you see him keeping up that momentum this weekend again? Well, for me, the, the, the young lad, I think he has broken into the first team. <laughs> and he just needs to be playing week in, week out. That consistency. He needs to be consistent. And like I said uh, uh, Monday, the, the goal he scored against um, uh, the, the last match they play, where he ended 4-4. It was a fantastic goal. And for a player of that age to be playing at that class, I think it's a fantastic one. And um, this weekend, you might just get another goal for the Villarreal. All right, check out for the lad called Chukweze. Let's move up to England and look at the EPL. Top games, you would say, but the game everybody's looking up to is the one between the Arsenal of England and also Liverpool of England, but this time it will be at the Anfield. Now, um, Tayo, to be very candid with you, this is a game I would like to watch. I, I, I love Liverpool as a team. Arsenal has won that I follow strictly from your own point of view. Are you seeing any element of surprise or you think Liverpool will take it all through? Well, for me, <laughs> well, I, I have to be factual because being an Arsenal fan, I'm not giving it to Arsenal because, you know, when, when your hopes are very high on Arsenal, they tend to disappoint. But the league is still very young. Yeah. And um, we don't really have, there is no excuse for Yonan Emery because no injury, majority of the players are still fit. So they sh he should be able to, those guys should be able to do everything possible. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if they lose this, it's going to be, the majority of the blame will go Back to, to the him. coach. But I'm hoping Arsenal will be able to hold at least maybe a draw. Let me put you on the hot okay. seat. Score line. Uh, well, for me, maybe 2-1 in favor of Arsenal. All <laughs> right, I like that. Okay, let's round up the show this morning by looking at what is happening right here in the Bundesliga. Like I told you earlier on, we'll be bringing live games to you right here at the Football Center. That's the name of the program. 1.30 on the dot on Saturday. And you can be rest assured that we'll take your calls, we'll take your SMSs, we'll be on the social media to interact with you. Not just that, we'll also be giving out wonderful gifts as the game progresses on the Bundesliga. Uh, Tayo, um, the focus is back to Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund. But there is a big one coming up this weekend that has to do with Schalke 04 and Bayern Munich. Considering the fact that they didn't win their first game, uh, do you see any turnover from Bayern Munich against Schalke 04? Well, for me, last season, they actually, they, they beat Shaka Ofo, home and away. But looking at their last game, they drew. But I'm hoping they will be able to bounce back mm. because they need to start winning. Unlike before that, if you lose, you might still come back. So league has, league has actually changed. And then you can imagine La Manchester City last season. They, they led the EBA, uh, the, in the APL throughout the season. Yeah. So they shouldn't just leave it uh, for, uh, for Borussia Dortmund. Borussia Dortmund won their first game 5-1 and they are on top of the log now. Yeah. So Bayern Munich must call, uh, come all out tomorrow to ensure that they get the maximum points. All right, before I let you go, Ty, before we leave the set, I need to put you on the hot spot. There is a gentleman, everybody is so scared of him, Mr. VAR. Do you see the VAR having more controversy this weekend? Well, uh, it's, it's going to happen because <laughs> we could rem uh, remember Manchester City Tottenham. That uh, Gribel, Jesus. But uh, that was the rule. The rule says if the ball touches a hand, irrespective of whatever dimension that you score, it's no good. Well, you know, <laughs> Manchester City, they, they love to win. And they are, their coach is a bad loser. Yeah. He was actually talking to the media yeah. despite the fact that the ball was a foul. But we are still going to see a lot of that this season. So, Mr. P. A. Aru will still be on full focus. Yes. All right, that's all we can take this morning. It's been exciting right here on Superdom Sports. I will see you later in the afternoon on Sports Beat. Tyler, thanks for coming in this morning. Thanks for having me. All right, we'll go on this break. When we we'll come back, Harriet and Blessed and Olamide, the crew for Superdome, will be rounding up the morning show. Stay tuned.